And um, let me tell you a little bit about Turtle Snap. Um, she's been dedicated the last five years of her career to researching malware and trying to provide some insight into future attacks and around international terrorism. Her goal is to one day work full time in the United Kingdom, providing offensive research to commercial entities. I'm not sure why the UK, but I mean, you wouldn't tell me that story. Yeah. I like the Brits. Okay. Not the greatest food, but like. (laughs) It's the Harry Potter thing, really, honestly. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm in that generation. All right, cool. All right, guys, so I'm a bit of a basement dweller, so obviously I'm up here about to shit my pants. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to talk to you today. I swear I'm going to try and make it um, relevant to what you guys are interested in, too. So, like you said, I'm, I'm Turtle Snap. You can call me Turtle or Turt, whatever. Um, and I'm going to talk today about uh, malware and biology. We're going to make some connections here. So last year there was a you can you can read this while I'm talking I'm not going to read it to you we're not <laughs> we're not in elementary school here um, so last year there was a talk about this it was very similar it was about uh, creating something that is based off of the HIV virus uh, that it's a malware so there was a discussion about uh, comparing HIV to the Dooku virus and what can we what else can we compare it to. Um, what's, what's the evolution, like what are the connections that we can make here so that we can advance this field? And this field meaning just get some research shit in with malware, cybersecurity. You know, if you guys are on the, on the bad side of things, this might be an interesting talk for you too because this is some pe- pretty scary shit that I'm about to talk about. All right. So. What I'm gonna <laughs> what I'm gonna talk about is not necessarily malware, you know, spreading its virus to humans, and you know, we're gonna catch like the HIV of of computer computer viruses or anything like that. It's it's more of it's gonna be a computer virus. We haven't quite made it to where we can move it on over. Maybe if people get more like chips like I did just did next door and and whatnot, I can. I'm actually gonna go home and work on that and see if I can do it. But um, yeah, it's going to be more about making those connections between human biology and malware and why it's actually a pretty cool topic. All right, so first we need to get some like foundation, some ground rules. I don't know you, you don't know me, so I'm going to make sure that you got some foundation so that we can make this interesting. So we have biological evolution and cultural evolution. Are we familiar? Cool. All right. So obviously biological evolution happens a lot slower. You know, that's that's, you know, traits and and everything like that. It, occur, it occurs at a very slow rate. And then cultural evolution can happen extremely rapidly. You know, there's there's fads happening, there's this and that whatever. Um but there's there's a difference in the different types of evolution and I want you to keep that in mind. All right. So next we're going to talk about we're going to bring it to a different level and talk about primary and secondary secession. So the primary secession is whenever there's like no soil, like soil nay, and then there's, you know, it's a, it's a pioneering organism. It's, it's just there, there's nothing else there. It's got no enemies, it's, you know, it's brand new. And, you know, the secondary secession is whenever we've really built up some stuff. You know, we've, got a, we've established a city there now. We've established like people have to have jobs and trade and different things like that. So let's, so that's kind of, I want you to keep that in mind as well. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to get into the malware part of it. So I'm, sk- I'm, I'm going a little fast over that, but I really want to talk about this really cool piece of malware whenever I get to it. So if you guys need me to slow down or stop, just raise your hand and be like, yo, I don't know what you're saying right now. All right, so the evolution of malware. So this is a chart that I actually got online at the RSA. That's wrong. (laughs) Um, But it actually does represent a pretty, um, it is a pretty good representation of the evolution of malware. So if we look um, over here, there's actually one other one that was uh, formed in 1986. And that's going to be the brain malware. And that one actually, if you look at it, (laughs) and you know what you're reading, it actually has the address, the phone number, like who it was, and like everything about the malware. It was a very basic 
primary secession type of thing. Like computers were new, new it, not really, but like malware was new. And this got onto the computers and people were like, what is this? Like, how did you get onto my shit? Like, what is, what is this? And so people actually flew over to the brain computer services company and found out that it was an accident that they leaked some kind of software that somebody screwed up on and it wasn't meant to be a malware, but it was a malware. It was a spyware and, and it got all over the United States. And that's whenever people started using, um, antivirus softwares kind of. So if you look here, this is going to be the biological evolution. If you look over here, we're going to look at more the cultural evolution. So things really start speeding up around 2003. Um, and then here we are. So where's the connection here? So, <laughs> so on the top left, you're going to see human biology. On the bottom right, you're going to see a computer virus. All right. So First, there, you know, there's an infection. We both have an infection. We both reproduce, and we both spread things to others. Maybe I don't. I get tested. Maybe you do. I don't know you. Like I said, you don't know me. I don't know you. Um, but you know, you you spread things to others, and then it repeats the process. You know, viruses want to stay alive. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Because I've listened to a lot of talks and I've done a lot of research on people that want to compare human biology and viruses when the you know a computer virus is not the same thing as a biological virus it does not reproduce and try and make itself survive it is not alive right well lately <laughs> there's been some changes and but first let's look at the origin of viruses so there's three different there's three different stages that I'm going to talk about. I'm sure there's a lot more, but there's three main ones that I'm going to talk about. So there's re regressive evolution, which is parasitism. It's like when, you know, the parasites started coming around, they're like, ooh, I'm in this primary secession stage. I'm so popular. I'm like going to get all my, I'm going to get everything. You know, they, they lost a lot of functions, though, as they started phasing out. And um, they retain only what they needed for a parasitic lifestyle. The malware equivalent of that is the brain malware. It was just out there. It really had no function. It wasn't going to really replicate. It was just there, and it was feeding off of whatever the computer it was infecting had. Then there's the cellular origins, and that is the viruses that are derived from the subcellular functional assemblies of micro, uh, macromolecules. So all in all, those are things that if you compare it to botnets, those are cell to cell. And in malware, it's bot to bot. So there's, if you can see, there's a lot of really good similarities between malware and human biology. And then there's in, uh, independent entities, all right? These are the real advanced ones. These are the ones that started around the secondary secession, pretty strong. It's feeding off of what was already out there, and it is wanting to live. It is a prebiotic, self-replicating molecule. And it is not the Dooku virus. It is not all this other stuff that was engineered to go on a computer, vi on a computer or an operating system for an antivirus to just pick up its signature and it get blocked like the configurer or something like that. You know, it, it, that is not similar to that. But today, I'm going to talk to you about Frankenstein. Uh, yeah, not, not the movie, not the monster, but Frankenstein the malware. And that is, Frankenstein is going to be the first, the first are, you know, if, you can argue with me if you want to, but I've reverse engineered it. It is the first true replicating but mutating malware. It creates its own children that have a different DNA, if you will, and it also learns from where, what operating system and computer it's on. Now, there are three different Frankensteins out there. There's a Franken Frankenstein that it was developed at the University of Texas, there is a, you know, yes, this might not be, whatever, don't, come on. <laughs> um, there was the one that was um, built at the University of Texas that was bought by the United States Air Force, 
that was that's the good one that I'm going to talk about. And then there's the most recent one that happened um, that people finally figured out how to do on June 19th that only infects the memory part of your of your computer. But the Frankenstein that we're going to talk about is going to be um, the one that was actually built by the University of Texas, because that one is the one that uses artificial intelligence in order to get into your computer, read what antivirus software you have, and then mold its children around being able to survive that antivirus software. Um, it is also going to survive, it, it basically, all right, so it takes the, the blueprint of your computer. I'm trying to like, get this on technical. Is anybody, is everybody technical? Is anybody new in here? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we'll just, all right, we'll, all right. <laughs> I'm not trying to call you guys out or anything. But, all right, so it takes the blueprint of, um, and it takes the blueprint of the computers that it's infecting, but it also has uh, gadget sequences that um, antivirus, uh, antivirus uh, software today really aren't detecting. And it is very behavior-based, which changes with every single computer that it's infecting because it wants to stay alive. It learns on its own. So once it is released out into the wild, it learns on its own. Now, because it's the Frankenstein malware, um, it is very easy for it to not need any kind of human interaction at all. So once it's, once it's out there, it's out there. Okay. Now, what do we do about getting it off? <laughs> well, we don't really have anything right now to get it off. And that is why I'm talking to you today because it's going to eventually get out there, whether I talk about it at DEF CON and tell all the bad hackers about it or not. It's, it's going to eventually come out there because they are perfecting it. Um, the one that happened in June 2019, I can send you guys a link to it. Let me know if you guys are actually, you know, you want to talk more technical about this. I can definitely answer those questions and, and get the emails going. But, um, but that one is made up of pieces of code from benign host programs. So it doesn't actually trigger any red flags as something foreign to the system. Um, but not only that, but by looking like something that the computer trusts, it could even become whitelisted, and it has become whitelisted with a lot of states. Um, and it also it it gives it a really easy tunnel to get straight into the heart of an organization. And also with Frankenstein, the people that built it, and if you reverse engineer one, you're not going to find the same one, but you can figure out how to reattach different arms to make it from ransomware and spyware and things like that to maybe something a little bit more malicious. And, and that's the really scary part of it because we don't have an AI, we don't really have a consistent AI antivirus software that we can utilize for something like this. And we are going into the AI world. Things, your world in biology is merging with our world in malware. And that is why I think it is extremely important to have this, make this connection with you guys and uh, <laughs> make this connection with you guys so that we can start really kind of combining our efforts, not just the cybersecurity people, but the people interested in human biology. Because the human biology, if you see, if you see and you understand what I was saying in, the, in this presentation, there's a lot of connections that can be made between the really scary stuff that's about to come out and human biology and how that has evolved as well with the cold viruses and everything like that. So where do we go from here? I mean, do we make vaccinations, you know? <laughs> do, do computers now need vaccinations? Uh, do they, like, what do they need? You know, a, the crucial aspect for any defense framework contains the ability to detect an attack before it reaches the target services and causes damage. But this is been whitelisted. The Frankenstein malware is being whitelisted, which is is just devastating. If you guys can imagine this getting into the power grid, this getting into the Mirai botnet network that is 
everywhere. It's on every CCTV. It's on, it's everywhere. It's in, it's in your laptops. It's, it's everywhere, but it hasn't been activated yet. So imagine the Frankenstein malware getting injected into the cell of the Mirai botnet, just like how the HIV virus gets injected into a cell, grows, becomes whatever. And then many months or years later, you find out, oh shit. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of what this is, is Frankenstein can get into those bots and it can learn about everything that the botnets are collecting data from and it can explode into your world. And I understand it looks like, it sounds like I'm a conspiracy theorist. I promise I'm not. I've really done the reverse engineering, the research in this. I've spent time in the basement with it. I've uh, worked with the, I've, I've actually got the sample from the United States Air Force on it. And I was able to look at that one compared to the one in the world today. It's not the same. The one in the world today basically just goes to the, uh, I wrote it, uh, it goes to the memory of your computer. And it'll send you a document based off of your calendars, based off of your emails, based off of everything else. And it'll send you a document for more malicious activity to happen. Like if you're a recruiter, I was, I was talking about this earlier. If you're a recruiter and it knows that you have meetings with all these people, you're getting resumes a lot of times in your email, it will send you Mark Davis resume 2019 and you just open it up. These are very, very um, particular, like uh, very specific um, emails and very specific campaigns that this malware is able to do, and I think it's really cool. So, <laughs> so um, there's a lot of gaps in research, and I think that as medical field people, I think you would appreciate um, that there is a need for more medical grade style research in cybersecurity with malware. Malware is the thing that's going to shut down our power grids. It's going to be the thing that like shuts down our phones. You know, we're going to have to learn how to write a letter again, you know, like, <laughs> um, and it, it is, it is a very real and it's a very scary threat that is starting. And yet, yes, it took several years for hackers to even figure out how to get it to go onto a memory. Um, from 2012 to 2019, people were trying to figure it out. But, I mean, five, ten years from now, with all the AI pushes and, and you know, because that's the buzzword today, you know, with all the AI pu pushes, you know, where is it going to be in five years? Like, is this, is the actual malware from, that the U.S. Air Force has going to be the next one in the wild? And we need to come together and research and come up with some shit <laughs> because uh, that's not going to be a good time for anybody. If you thought the NSA was bad a few years ago, um, this one's going to be watching your shit just as bad. So let's make some connections. If anybody has any, any questions you want to see, I actually recorded a video of me reverse engineering this malware. So if you'd like to see that, um, just contact me. I can uh, give you the, I'll give you guys the YouTube link to it. I'll post it on YouTube. Um, yeah, I'll post it on, I can post it on YouTube. Yeah, I, I, okay, cool. I had to talk to my, my company. Um, <laughs> I'll post it on YouTube and so that everybody can see it and um, those that are really interested in, in malware and understand the code and stuff like that. If you have any questions, I, I love talking about this. Um, it's my jam. So if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to ask me about it. What's up? <laughs> there he goes. Um, the samples are already public. The samples that I have um, played with, I'm probably not going to because my shit's monitored. <laughs> so um, I'm probably not going to, but I can definitely talk to you about it if, um, if anybody's interested in, in how to um, re-engineer one of those. Um, we can definitely talk about it in an academic setting, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> cool? Any, anybody else scared? Did I scare? Did I do shit? I'm, was, I, was I shit just now? Did you guys have a good time? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah.
And there's a lot of references. This isn't just like a conspiracy theory that I did. There's a, there's a shit ton of references. So, uh, yeah, I have a lot of links. Um, a little um, tidbit, a little extra that I wanted to leave you guys with in case you weren't interested in my conversation. Um, there is a smartphone out there that in, that is made in Tokyo that is actually starting to be able to scan people's uh, retinas and their skin to discover any kind of viruses, and that's what their medical field is going to be like um, in the next few years. It's being perfected now, and... Huh? Well, it's what? Oh. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Um... No, but I mean, uh, I find it interesting because now I want to hack the smartphone and try and, and try and put some malware on there saying that you're fine whenever you're my enemy. So it's very interesting to kind of like merge the two fields together and, and see what we can do to try and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the good guy. So, you know, I do it for a good reason, but yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, if anybody has any questions about it, happy to go outside and talk to you about it, or we can, you guys can raise your hands real quick right now. You got five seconds, five. Oh, that's a super good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. So, uh, yeah, you just ask me, and uh, I'll just, uh, I'll give you my email. It's talk to, it's talk to turtlesnap at gmail.com. Talk to turtlesnap at gmail.com. So, yeah, no spaces, no weird stuff. Just talk to turtlesnap at gmail.com. I appreciate you guys letting me talk about this and setting the record straight that there is a Van Frankenstein malware out there. Um, it was driving me nuts. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for, for listening and taking it all in. Thank you.